I'm here at Surrey University in sunny Guildford to meet with dancer Laura Jones. If I tried to describe how brilliant she was, uh, this link would be very long and very wordy. So instead, let's go and meet her. Well, Laura, thanks for Hello. seeing me. Uh, um, can I ask, what was it that made you want to be a dancer? Um, gosh, well, I think I've wanted to be a dancer from really as long as I can remember. Um, one of my first memories was as a dancer, um, going to my cousin's ballet class. And I don't really remember much about the class, actually, but I just I remember the, being there and enjoying it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's... It's always something that I've wanted to do. Um, and maybe it was about the age, sort of like 15, 16, that I decided that actually I think this is something that I do want to take seriously and I really want to try and yeah, go for it as a career. Now, I know that when I was uh, at school, all of my mm -hmm. teachers, when I said to them I want to go and work in the media and yeah. in music, they went, don't be silly, you're disabled, get a job in an office. Did you get anyone say anything like that to you? No, I think I kind of, I actually got the reverse almost because um, I'd kind of made up my mind before I had my injury that dance was what I wanted to do and started going to college to study A-level dance and then that was when I had my spinal bleed and so then I thought, oh, well, that's it, that's dance out of the um, equation what am I going to do instead? Um, and it was my teachers or my tutors at college that actually got in touch with um, me and said, no, there is still a possibility, can still dance, you know, there's all these different things out there, there's lots of possibilities, so come back and give it a try. And, and originally I was only going to do the um, theory part of the A-level dance and the choreography, but sort of as the two years progressed, we kind of gradually got through the course and went, I think I can do that as well. I think I can do that as well. So and I ended up, got to the end of the course and had done 100% um, of the course, all, all of the practical and theory side. So I'm the first person in a wheelchair to have done that, to have completed 100% the A-level Yeah, I, I read that so yeah. in an article I found about you that you were the first. I mean, yeah. so did, you, did you face any barriers? Or was, you know, was everyone really um, supportive? They were, I mean, my tutors were brilliant. They kind of, they hadn't had a lot of experience before, um, and neither had I. So kind of between us, we were kind of both finding our way, really. Um, and, but they were great. They would just like phone up the exam board and go, well, you know, we have this student. This is how we think you need to mark her. And the exam board would be like, okay. All right then. So, in a way, it was good because um, there wasn't a kind of "this is how it is" and you have to fit into this mould. They were kind of very open to, okay, well, we'll do this, well, we'll try this. But on the other hand, there was no one's lead to follow. We were just kind of like searching around in the dark some of the time because no one else had done it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a strange feeling to be the trailblazer. Yeah, I, I had that similar experience with my study and, and in a way it's quite nice because yeah you get quite involved yes and there's yeah it's a sort of it's a strange mix of a lot of freedom but then also yeah trying to find some direction or something yeah. and a lot of pressure because yes. you, you really want to pass it, yeah right? absolutely and if i do this wrong is this going to screw things up for everyone yeah. else after me <laughs> yeah so. so i mean was it a really enjoyable to, to to train to do dance yeah, definitely. I think, because um, I've been doing like dance classes my whole life, really, um, and I'd always loved them. Um, but I think to actually then go and train in sort of in a slightly more formal way, learning about the background and theory and 
anatomy and that sort of side of things was quite interesting and that was quite eye-opening as well because I'd always just kind of done the ballet and the tap and the jazz and all that sort of routine so just even to learn about contemporary dance was quite an eye-opener um, let alone contemporary dance with people dancing with disabilities which I hadn't really seen before my injury either so yeah it's a big eye-opener. All right so did you bring you, you studied that as well? Um, we did, yeah, there's, um, that was sort of like part of the course there was, um, we looked at one of the Can Do Co dance films, Inside Out, yeah. I think, and, things. and we had, because they were obviously, at the time, the main company to look at, and sort of that was the, the role models that I had. Yeah. So yes, and we, um, in fact, we, my t um, tutors were great because they managed to arrange for them to come in and actually do a workshop with us um, in this, um, during the term. And also they arranged for Vicky, who was the artistic director of Stopgap, also came in because they knew her, so she came in as well and did some work with us. So they were really great at like, getting people in to help support. So obviously once you've got your exam and your thing, what was it like to then go out into the world of work? Um, kind of, well, my intention was, because I'd done the two years of A-levels, and this kind of, like, what am I doing, kind of trying to find our way through it. And I thought, mm, don't know about university, might be, you know, but then it's, is it going to be another three years of kind of just muddling through and not really having having something to follow and kind of having to work out how it, how it works as we go. So I was like, mm, do I want another three years of that? So I thought about it and pretend, I thought, well, I'll sort of do all the stuff like to get ready to apply, but I'll put it off, I'll have a year out and I'll just see kind of what experiences I can get and what I can learn then and kind of maybe that will give me a bit more direction if I do go to university. And like literally in the summer after I finished my A-levels, um, I found out about a couple of d workshops that Stopgap were doing and then Stopgap were auditioning and I auditioned and I got the job. So that was sort of it, straight out of A-levels into work, which very lucky, I think, to be able to do that because, yes, yeah, so I didn't have a lot of time kind of going, what do I do, where do I go, who do I work for, where, you know, I've got this skill now and I want to use it. I was actually able to go straight into working with a company and again doing a lot of learning on the job. Kind of mm. that was a massive learning learning curve. So, yeah. It's funny actually, I never thought of that, but you're right that after always being the first one, mm. you eventually get so you've just had enough. Yeah. So I know that when I was looking at going to university, it was kind of like, oh well I think we can manage it. And it was like, I don't want to think you can manage it. For once, can I just go somewhere where they go, yes, yes. and we have students here, they've all got yes. degrees, and it's all very lovely. Yes. Uh, so, tell me about Stopgap. Yes. So, um, yeah, I've been with Stopgap now since 2001, and it's just been a phenomenal journey. When I joined the company, um, there was just Vicky and Chris, Vicky's artistic director and dancer, and Chris is a dancer, and they were, um, at that time, they'd got funding to employ two new dancers. So that was myself and Dan Watson. So that made four of us. And that was it. That was the company. We did everything. We did all the admin, all the trying to book space and get workshops and evaluations and applying for funding and everything, um, which was a really good experience to kind of just, it's a case of, well, you have to do that, otherwise there's no work. So that was, yeah, good experience. Um, and yeah, it's thankfully gradually grown over the years and now sort of got proper infrastructure and an admin team and a management team and um, we've been recently up to five dancers and there's kind of yeah, a whole load of people behind the scenes as well. So like, yeah, it's amazing when you look back to where it started, kind of, yeah, just the difference, the growth of the company has been amazing. So tell us some of the shows mm. that you've put on them. Um, we do both, at the moment we do both indoor work and outdoor work street arts, and which is really nice to have kind of a mix of that, um, So because you, you, it's just a completely different thing sort of in the theatre as it is outside. Um, so we've recently, our theatre work has been a double bill called Trespass, 
and um, we worked with Thomas Noon for one of the pieces and Rob Tanyan for the other. And that the piece with Tom and Noon, Thomas Noon within is the first full dance piece that I've done, not in my wheelchair at all. So that was quite interesting. I've done like little bits out of my chair, um, but it's quite a kind of a comfort zone. It's like, you know, safety zone, I've got my chair and I know what I'm doing in my chair. Um, and so like gradually I've been like doing a few bits out of the chair and then this this whole um, 25 minute piece I'm not in the oh, chair wow. at all so I start sat on a table then on a chair and then I get lifted onto the floor and then the various things and then I do sort of a duet starts as a duet and then builds into a five people all dancing together um, kind of being lifted and up so I'm and being upright as well as kind of moving around and upside down and everywhere. So that was, yeah, very interesting experience, very different to anything that I'd really done. <laughs> who uses a wheelchair brings a new kind of element to the dance that you perform. Yeah, I think so. I think there's, it definitely means that there's, we sort of, that there's more things to think about. There's more issues to think about. And sometimes there's kind of problem solving and okay, well, we can't do it like that. But then often, rather than seeing it, that as a problem, you've got to go, okay, that's the potential to find something different or a different way of doing things. So, yeah, there's definitely, whilst there's obviously a lot of things I can't do, there's a lot of things that I can do because of the wheelchair or because of the, the nature of my movement kind of allows for exploring movement in a different way, which I think can be quite interesting. And, and it is, the company is very different dancers on stage, so it's always interesting to look at because although we're moving together, you've got such a variety of bodies in there and ways of moving so yeah there's it kind of almost emphasizes the movement more I think because you've got so many versions of it it kind of really enriches the movement I know I've been to see a couple of um, modern ballet um, mm. performances where the dancers are using calipers and crutches and, and yeah. I thought that was quite interesting that you know it adds such a new element that they're even experimenting with things that we use to make their dance Different. It would have been nice if they just asked us to join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, some of us who maybe have the skills. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, we know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but it's interesting that there is that kind of much more so now that appetite for looking for something slightly different. And that, you know, whilst, you know, there is obviously and there will always be the kind of very, um, uh, set structure and idea of you know companies that then this is what dance is and we all look the same and we all have our legs up to our ears and we all but there is yeah a lot more of kind of looking for differences and interests and uniqueness in people I think which is always good yeah
Now, we met at the Paralympics. So how did you get involved with the Paralympics? Gosh, yes. Um, it was a kind of just a crazy, crazy year, really, with the Paralympics. Um, I, um, I knew Jenny um, Seeley, one of the artist, co-artistic directors from a long time ago. I met her at um, a workshop quite a long time ago, and we'd kind of been keeping an eye on each other's progress. And also I knew Bradley from, um, we've, with Stopgap, I performed at the Greenwich and Docklands um, International Festival. So I kind of knew them both. Um, and they suggested that I might like to audition for the aerial work, um, which was very exciting. So I went up to London and did the audition, but it was quite complicated to try and get a harness that was going to be suitable for me and they were, there was concerns that the amount of time I'd be in the harness, I'd end up with sores and things like that and it was just like, that's probably not going to be suitable so we're not going to be able to offer you the aerial. But would you be interested in being a dance captain? So, um, yes, leapt at the chance. Unfortunately, it meant that there was just, I couldn't do that and continue to work with Stop Gap over the summer because um, just... Yeah, well, too busy. <laughs> yeah, your work was schedule manic. was a bit Absolutely. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit crazy. Um, yeah, so that was quite a tough decision so what? in a way. So, so like, what is a dance captain? What did you do? As, I think everyone needs to yes, know just how much as work a dance you did. captain, everything. Yeah. Um, no, we um, well, we first um, the dance captains first met in March of 2012, and we started work on the choreography. Um, we had various sections and bits of music, and we worked together with. Um, Kevin Finnan, who was the choreographer, and Helen Parler, the assistant choreographer, worked with them to work up the choreography for all of the mass movement. So everything, well, all of the movement sections where there's lots of people, that was us. So we kind of created that. And then um, from the 26th of June, we then had all the volunteers in, and it was kind of massive groups, um, up to over 300 at a time in some cases, and teaching them the choreography and working with them to make sure they got it, and then putting it into the big space, putting it into the structure and everything. So, yes, as you, yeah. like, you must say now that it was harder to teach some people than others, because I was one of the ones that just didn't get it at all. <laughs> we had, there, was, there was a lot of different people. <laughs> no, it was great, because I think that was one thing that was really special about the Paralympics, was everyone was welcome. And we did, we had some people with amazing experience, and we had some people who were just... Slightly lacking in coordination, self self admitted, um, and but everyone's enthusiasm and the working towards it was brilliant, and it kind of I think it made it more special because it was about everyone working together and everyone striving for their best, and it wasn't about we had this thing a particular thing that it wasn't about unison, it was about unity, and I think it really was. We really did find a unity with all of the uh, volunteers. What did it feel like when you were actually dancing in the shows, not only to take part, but to know mm -hmm. that everybody else was doing something that you'd created or helped create? Oh, it was the most just surreal but amazing experience, even just being in the stadium. I just like, I mean, we spent quite a bit of time in the end in the stadium and it just never ceased to fill me with amazement. I would, I mean, like some of the volunteers would be like, oh, okay, and I'd be like, <gasps> in the stadium, it's amazing. I'm really excited. Um, yeah, it was just the, the size and the scene are all coming together, kind of right from the beginning where we were sort of back in March, kind of eight of us in a studio, kind of trying to figure out what might work and then seeing it on the masses, all the movement, and then seeing it in the stadium and then the performance with just everything, the crowd and the lights. Just such a special atmosphere. It was, yeah, unbelievable. Was there a specific yeah. high point? Um, possibly at the very, very beginning, because um, a lot of the way through, because all the dance ca as a dance captain, we were in most of the sections, so there was a lot of quick changing and <laughs> off change on, and so it kind of just went really fast. But right at the very beginning, when we all came on for the prologue with the umbrellas and just standing there, waiting and hearing the countdown and sort of like trying to look about as much as possible without fidgeting sure. and just, yeah, that was a real moment to kind of savour everything.
everything can take it. to any disabled people out there that want to become dancers? Um, it's hard work and it's tough, but it's so worth it. Um, so I think just get as much experience as possible. Um, try to find as many workshops and classes as possible and kind of take the initiative yourself. Don't. There are, there are a lot more um, accessible classes and there are a lot more integrated work happening, but... If there's nothing in your area, then maybe just find something that, you know, anything, um, speak to whoever's running it and talk about going along and kind of take the initiative to, yeah, try and work for yourself and, yeah, make it accessible for yourself. And then, you know, find out, you know, there are, as I said, there are more things happening. So find out what's happening, go along and, yeah, just get as much experience as possible and enjoy it. Yeah. Definitely. So what does the future hold for Laura? Ooh, the future. Um, I'm not too sure because I kind of haven't really been thinking past summer 2012. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, yeah, that's that. Get the Paralympics done, and then oh, there's there's more world and life. Um, I think well, continuing to work with Stopgap. Um, we've got a new um, rep coming up. Where we've got um, a new. We'll be having a new dancer join us in January. So we're auditioning at the moment and then um yeah so then we're creating new work and touring that so that's always exciting to be in a creation process it's always kind of to have that t chance to kind of really be creative and really think about the world there is a town in my Ontario. Yeah.